Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Now before we start today's video, I do want to let you guys know that the new Fong Pack drop just released. So if you guys want to support, feel free to check it out. We've also released quite a few peekers on the site as well, but check it out at fongpack.com. Now let's continue with the video. Nate Goyard. Alrighty guys, so as you guys can tell from today's video, we are reviewing the Supra. It has been a few months of ownership, I believe like four or five months now. I did purchase this pretty much at the end of September. So we've had it for quite some time. And on top of that, we put some tasteful mods on it as well. We'll go ahead and go through the breakdown of that, of what's pretty much done so far. And then also give you guys my honest thoughts and opinions. Should you get a Supra? Is this just another Z4? What is the truth about this? Let's go ahead and dive in. Now, I want to first go ahead and start with the mods that have been done on this car. Easily, you guys can tell, we put on some new wheels. We don't have the stock wheels anymore, and we have the 57 DRs, and these are the RBC color, uh, which is like raised black coating. So they have like kind of a nice diamond black polish. They look really good, and the fitment on this is pretty solid. I believe the front is a 19 by 9.5 plus 25, and I believe the rear is a 19 by 10.5 plus 35 and then the tires that we wrapped around this are nitto nt triple five g2s all around uh, these are 275 35s up front and 305 35s in the rear so we did definitely go bigger in the rear originally it came with 275s in the rear and 255s up front but with a car like this you definitely need grip and so we added more grip definitely to this and man does this thing handle for sure now a few other mods that are tastefully done under the hood that you really can't see and if you've seen some of my videos are the catalyst downpipe and the flex fuel kit with that we just actually recently added uh, everything's pretty much tucked in very well so you can't even tell the only thing that is is actually if you come over here to the back you can kind of see the flex fuel kit tucked back there but other than that the goal was to make this look as stock as possible under the engine bay i don't think i'm going to get an intake or anything and with a car like this all you need is a downpipe and like a tune so for very easy power it takes very minimal mods in this car and that's definitely a plus and so that's kind of how i'm going to have it i just like things to look kind of oem plus in here and that's how it's going to be here the other thing that we've added to that is a performance mod is as you guys know the arc performance exhaust which is honestly my favorite exhaust of all time and let's go ahead and get a little close up here Whew. they are beautiful polished and uh, they still use the valve and if you guys didn't know the supras have a valve or a butterfly valve is what they call it which basically closes one side of the exhaust and keeps the other side open kind of taming the volume a little bit um, it does help actually believe it or not especially once i put on the exhaust and the downpipe added it's definitely prominent to notice that it makes a difference but it definitely is awesome to have that because i can just drive through the neighborhood and not have my neighbors hate me which is awesome about that but those are pretty much it as far as mods. Everything else aesthetically on the car came with the car. The side skirts, the front lip, the rear diffuser. I mean, those are just OEM pieces. And then a bunch of just kind of minor cosmetic mods too that I forgot to mention are these little window louvers. Now these window louver things, I, I guess they're called like the wind buffer uh, resistance. These are just straight carbon. Uh, they add a nice design to it, but they actually have a purpose and that's to allow me to enjoy having the windows down because in this car the way the aerodynamics is is that it just has this horrific helicopter noise when you have the windows down and so this completely actually dissipates it like i can drive at least you know 80 miles an hour and i don't even hear it and then the other thing are these carbon fiber mirror overlays this is an actual cap it's just an overlay but um, it's just a nice touch to it too to uh, give the car a little bit more carbon and just aesthetic to it because originally without this overlay it was just a flat black so i definitely wanted to cover that up 
But those are just the minor cosmetics that we've had done to this, guys. And nothing really much other than that. The car already comes with Brembo calipers. And again, if you guys are wondering, this is the 3.0 premium option. So it does have subs in the back. It has the uh, infotainment screen, full digital. Uh, has the heads-up display. That's what I was trying to figure out. Heads-up display, which I actually disabled, but I don't really use it that often. And so this is definitely still the inline six 3.0 and premium option top option that you can get for this car. Now, aside from all the mod stuff, I know you guys want me to talk about this car, let you guys know my honest opinions, my reviews, and let you guys figure, is this a car that you want to obtain? So let's go ahead and get to that now. Alrighty. So for the little time that I've owned this car, there has been a lot of controversy on a car like this. Uh, one, people call it a BMW. I actually get that quite a bit, believe it or not. And uh, two, not a lot of people are a fan of the auto transmissions. So I'm here to kind of give you guys some reassurance and kind of give you my point of view of how I feel about this car, how I feel about the platform in general. And is this honestly a great car to buy or is this just a BMW like people say? So I'm going to go ahead and break this down real quick into two pieces. We're going to talk about the exterior real quick. We're going to talk about the interior, and then I'm going to give you guys my full results on basically driving wise, power wise. And in the end, does this kind of meet what a Supra should be? So let's go ahead and start out with the exterior. All righty. So starting off with the exterior, guys. Now, a lot of people call this a BMW because the fact that this was built on a BMW chassis. This was built on a BMW Z4 chassis. So, of course, I can understand where they're coming from. And you can kind of see definitely the curves along hood and just a little bit of how it is taking a little from that BMW Z4 look. But one thing that I do want to give credit where credit is due is the actual look of this car. Uh, mainly all this, actually, believe it or not, is all Toyota. Aside from the chassis, all this is Toyota, guys, and you guys got to believe that because even in the rear form, if you go look at a complete new Camry from Toyota, they do the same line here on the Camrys, and a lot of the Toyota cars, especially modern days, have that kind of like line. So there's a lot of distinct lines to this car that definitely have the similarities to Toyota, and I know for a fact that Toyota worked on the full exterior so yes definitely what i say this is a toyota on the exterior for sure on top of that it definitely pays homage to the mark IV, having a sort of similarity on the headlights with a little modern taste added of course and that's what we got to see in a modern day car as well as the tail lights the tail lights pay a little bit of homage of course they're modernized and they're not following the full generic look and i know there's like replacements that you can get that kind of make it look like a mark IV. but this is honestly a nice touch to make it a modern day Supra and not go too similar with how the Mark IV is. So Toyota did a good job, I believe, on the exterior. This car definitely has a very, very unique look. And believe it or not, guys, I get stopped or <laughs> just thumbs up on the freeway in this car a lot more than you you would think. This, this car definitely pulls attention. And that's one thing that I think I love about this exterior is in any angle, this car really does pull attention. Now, I know a lot of people say this, and I will have to say this too. The front is definitely not as beautiful as the rear. It's still a good looking front, don't get me wrong. Maybe I need to add a lip or something, but I definitely like the rear a lot more. It's definitely very aggressive, and it doesn't matter because that's what you guys are all gonna see anyways. I'm just kidding, it's a joke. <laughs> but um, it is definitely a very nice and aesthetic rear end on this car. So yes. I think Toyota did a really good job on this exterior. I think this exterior is a lot more Toyota than it is BMW. And so this is just, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. And just like the Mark IVs too, and any Toyota too, they have the gas cap on this side. So I don't know, just a little bit of a touch taste that I just wanted to point out. But there's another thing that I also want to let you guys know, and I did park myself side by side with a Mark IV Supra um, that was also actually silver too. And one thing that we can really relate on are these hips, guys. I don't know how you see this, but these hips, oh, they're just so nice, especially when I clean the car. That's the best place to hit. But they're very similar compared to the Mark IV, and that's one thing that you got to also see when you see them side by side is how relatable they are in that aspect. Now, this one's obviously, I'd say, probably a tad bit bigger, if not maybe smaller. Hmm. I don't even remember how I how I saw them. They were almost the same. I, the hood is definitely longer for sure. One thing that I wish that they did, and I don't want to jump into the interior just yet, but I wish they added 
rear seats because the mark threes the mark fours they definitely have rear seats and it would be a nice touch and the reason i say that is because of the fact that even if they're as small as brz seats i can at least fit a car seat back there in the future if you know annabelle and i wanted to take our little one out to a car meet um unfortunately this is a two-seater so i can't do that so that is a definitely negative from this car i want to say real quick but different you know so yes let's back to the exterior real quick beautiful exterior i think they executed this nicely i'm a really big fan the headlights are nice very nice touch to them um the front grille is still aggressive and it has uh just a very nice modern day super look and yeah it still is, is a coupe so it's got the nice cockpit point of view and everything guys but let's go ahead and now dive into the interior so i can let you guys see the beautiful components in there and let's determine if that's more bmw or toyota okay diving in sorry for the water bottle <laughs> diving into the interior of the car well i'm not gonna lie it does definitely scream bmw on um, the reason being that i know people call this a bmw on the inside is more so to this centric area right here i noticed that it's just this area right here that people see as a bmw more than anything and the reason being is because bmw has all these little notches right here they got that infotainment screen kind of shape here the same knob i mean i understand it and the thing is that i want to say is although this centric area because this is still a combination of toyota and bmw is a bmw setting is it bad that's what i want to say because truthfully all these buttons have great functions actually these i set to be different things i don't know if you can kind of read it but uh one has a sport display one has a tire pressure one has the equalizer i've actually set these points to different things and that's the beauty of it is that these buttons aren't just meant for the radio you can actually set this to anything and that's awesome and i think that's a, a quick way to get to gauges that you need or places that you need through the infotainment which is a nice touch the uh, climate control is very easy you have the dual climate heated seats and um, pretty much everything else that's bells and whistles that you would want in a climate system and then of course the shift knob yes i know this is a bmw centric shift knob this is definitely i can't say this is toyota at all but i mean it's i mean it's a, it's a it's not like we're going to mainly use this guys and it's comfortable in the hands if you wanted to shift back and forth for sure but it's just going to put you in drive and when i drive this car i drive this car with the paddles a lot more than i do through here anyways so i'm not really bothered by it now i know it bothers some people because they feel like it's not truly a toyota in here but this is a great infotainment system this is a great just infotainment in general everywhere and this is a great knob like i mean it's not like i'm like i said this is a manual car so i'm not going to be shifting here a lot and these buttons are just easy accessible everything's here sport traction control all that that you need and then the media control so for me this doesn't bother me i guess you guys can have your opinion let me know what you guys think but yes we will say this part right here is for sure bmw okay so i started the car real quick to make the steering wheel straight but i wanted to go ahead and talk about the steering wheel this actually is not a bad steering wheel it's a very comfortable steering wheel but i definitely would say it's a very generic steering wheel this some is something that they could definitely improve on in the future and give it a little bit more beef i feel um and just more value to the car because you know you spend so much money for a car just to get a steering wheel that i feel like you can get in a prius or something but that's not still a bad thing it's definitely comfortable uh the paddle shifters now i know what you guys are saying is this really fun to drive it's it's not manual guys this isn't you know like stick like the civic si was you know so is this actually fun to drive and i will tell you guys yes this is exciting actually these paddle shifters are not like my is350 which were kind of very very sluggish you know you click it give it a few seconds then it finally shift these are shifting within milliseconds these are so fast this has a zf8 transmission and i don't think anything is going to at least manual wise going to outshift this thing you you are moving so quick through the gears bam 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 i'll place a video right here real quick film to mexico <laughs> And as you guys can see it's it's crazy it's it's amazing how fast this thing shifts so yes it's still exciting especially the power that it has 
backed up on this car and for me you know i'm getting closer to my 30s here so it is nice to just throw this in drive and be relaxed and with this transmission it's as quick as a dct but it's not a dct which is awesome you have to look it up it's a zfa completely different design but it has a con uh, a converter in there which actually makes it when you put it in drive in normal mode very comfortable it's not clanky like a dct and so when you want to drive normally it's nice it's really nice and and like i said you know as much as i love the third pedal and i will always be a manual enthusiast it is just nice to be able to be in this car comfortably and not have to worry about shifting sometimes through traffic and still be in a sport mode this is definitely going to be a lot faster than your generic manual transmission so it makes sense why they put these paddle shifters in here guys think about it the new gtrs are all automatic now and those are the dcts for a reason this is also a transmission that makes this supra as fast as it now is. the seats now i don't know if i can say these are bmw seats i feel like they should be a little bit more fancier so i feel like this could be a lot more toyota ish you guys let me know below but i will say one thing i love them compared to my si seats obviously these have a lot more features because of the cost of the car but it has memory seating it has everything electronic and then also lumbar support or sorry lumbar support and bolstering support so i can actually make this very tight around me believe it or not like a complete rally car or soft and comfortable and i've seen some videos um that dude in blue actually did a whole review of him doing a road trip on this car and i'll pop it up there too as well but he drove this car cross country and he even admitted how comfortable these seats were he didn't feel like he had any back issues or you know sleeping the next day feeling like his back hurt these are actually great believe it or not road trip seats like these seats are truly comfortable i don't think i'll ever have to swap them out i'm not gonna go crazy for race car guys sorry about that siri was just hitting there but um yeah these are definitely comfortable seats and i think they are a awesome plus to what the car added now like i said i know we're trying to compare this real quick too to bmw factors you guys let me know in my opinion i feel like it's a very toyota looking seat maybe with a little bit of a bmw touch but i definitely would say they're great seats overall all righty now moving on to trunk space now i got quite a few things in the trunk as you guys can all see, I got my backpack, my cleaning supplies, some of the Fong Pack decals, hey, and then a helmet that I use for when I go racing at the track. Psych, this is a helmet that I use when I go to K1 speed because this is not snow approved. But uh, <laughs> we'll kind of show you guys the amount of space that's in here. It's definitely a good amount. Now, I did another video the other day uh, filming myself jumping in the trunk yes of course we did it with the si so we had to do it with the supra and so i'll pop that clip up here and uh yeah maybe i don't really feel as confident to dive in here ah, okay that was a safer way yeah see you can sort of fit me in here yeah, i know Oh, see, Siri says I can't. So, let's, let's try and crisscross applesauce this. Let's see if we can just kind of... So, yeah. It's got a decent amount of trunk space. I mean, it fit one of me in there. So, uh, that's that's something to think about, right? <laughs> but, yeah. It's, it's obviously not going to fit back seats. And you can definitely see why, especially with those subs in the way. But it's definitely pretty nice. Oh, did I actually show you guys the subs? My bad. Let's open that back up. And I know I got all my stuff in here. But yes, if you can kind of see, there's one there and there is one over here. And that's how it comes with the car when you get the 3.0 premium edition. All right, now to the nitty gritty. The motor. And this is the most BMW thing for sure, I will say that everybody can talk about. And it's the motor. And I know this isn't a 2JZ or a future 3JZ. And I do want to talk about that as well. But it is a complete BMW motor, which is the B58. Now, this B58 is a tad bit different than your natural B58 that you get from the uh, 340Is and stuff from BMW. This has definitely had a lot more reliability to it as well. I, I think this is honestly the most reliable B58 you can get. Because Toyota, before throwing this in, they did 
take this whole thing apart bit by bit and analyze it and saw what things needed to be replaced and fixed to make this motor reliable to meet toyota's reliable standards so you have toyota's reliability mixed with the performance of the bmw inline six that this motor produces and this motor i gotta say i'm a believer this is an amazing motor this is an untouchable motor i mean well okay not untouchable but like it's pretty much a 2JZ, guys. This is still an inline six, just like a 2JZ. It's a single turbo. I know some 2Js came with the twin turbos and then they made them single turbos and all that. But this is a single turbo twin scroll. So it's pretty much a twin turbo and makes crazy power, just like a 2JZ would, and handles it too. This handles at least 850 plus uh, horsepower stock block, guys. Now, the weak point would be the transmission. The transmission only handles about 650, 700 torque, which is still a lot of power for sure if you don't think that's a lot of power then you're crazy because i think that's quite a lot of power uh, for a transmission to hold and there are already all blah, 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 starting my words but there are already built packages for the transmission on this car um there's i believe a stage zero which is like three grand and it holds about i believe like 750 torque and then there's like a stage one which is like five grand holds like 850 torque or i don't know something like that and then there's like the stage two which holds like 1200 torque so there's obviously a built package for all that type of stuff and it's definitely not as cheap as a civic but the components that this car already comes with is amazing and with the transmission it's just replacing the clutch packs i believe so it's it's a great transmission great engine the combination for this makes sense to me in my opinion and i think that they did a great job choosing this platform to put or this engine to put in this platform because of the fact that one bmw has been in the inline six game for a very long time and they do make motors that make power easy quick and fast you know you throw ecutech or or a boot mod on this and you're, you're set like you downpipe tune done you're already making like 500 wheel with e50 and 600 torque and that's a lot of power to this car especially with that fast of a transmission so it makes sense to me for them to go this route with bmw and partner up and put in this b58 now of course toyota helped a little bit they didn't main on it but it's still an amazing motor that toyota still helped a bit to make a little bit more reliable now is this comparable to the 2jz how to show my face for this yes i do believe it is this is a modern day 2jz guys and if you don't think so you need to drive one you need to put power to it because of the fact that this thing is insane it spools very quick because of that twin scroll turbo and the stock turbo still makes great power insanely great power and on top of that if you go full bolt-ons big turbo you're making upwards of whew, eight almost 900 horsepower for sure easily with just a few minimal mods which is crazy to me so this is definitely a great option that i feel like toyota went with if they made a 3jz yes this this car would not be what it is priced at today for sure this would definitely be up in gtr range and i know what you guys are saying well i would have paid that money for it if it, you know if they built a 3jz and i don't think a lot of people would everybody says something but truthfully i wouldn't be able to afford it and it's kind of nice that they didn't you know go into the development of that maybe in the future it'd be sick but at least putting in this motor which is still an amazing motor that makes this car still a a, a threat you know a force to be reckoned with on the streets i mean the videos are out there the proof is out there and so toyota did a great job also guys keep in mind that even though they partnered up like this they partnered up with yamaha too for the 2jz and on top of that like even like the paganis they have mercedes motors and you don't call the pagani a mercedes so the people that call this a bmw yes i understand that and you know it's an embracement thing too but bmw is in a bad brand and they make great motors and this was an excellent choice to throw into this supra to make it a modern day beast this is truthfully a modern day beast there's videos out there guys check them out you can even see these keeping up with gtrs with the minimal mods that they do so yes it is a bmw inside from the heart here but there's still a mixture of toyota guys and is it are they wrong were they wrong for this truthfully because this is one hell of a beast of a motor Alrighty, so I'm gonna let you guys know my opinions here driving this car how does it feel stability wise and just concluding this whole thing of how I feel now one thing I didn't really get to show you guys and because we didn't really start the car is the dash yes I know we need fuel but um here is the dash and as you guys can see 
I don't know. Is it BMW guys or is it Toyota? You guys let me know. Yes, check engines on. That's due to the catalyst downpipe. We're not tuned yet, but coming coming soon, coming soon. So I just want to show you guys that real quick. And um, let's make sure you guys are got the full. Okay, perfect. So now guys, we are gonna be heading on to our little drive out here. And you can hear the beautiful arc performance exhaust. Let's make sure we have all the valves open. Fully disabled traction control. There you go. I don't know if you guys can see that. Of course, I don't know how this camera, it says VSC off. Um, you just hold it down. So we're gonna go ahead and start driving now and I'm gonna let you guys know my true thoughts and opinions. How does this car handle? How does this car feel? Um, first diving in the handling wise, best car. Now I wouldn't say the best car that I've had that handles, but it's a very stern grip handle. Like in, in my Civic, when you put it on sport mode and all that, you can tell slightly for sure, but this one you can definitely tell. Um, it's a lot more prominent. The steering wheel really stiffens up, if that makes sense, and you can you can really feel the feedback in the wheel. Uh, second, the sport mode opens up the second valve, so that's another reason why it's so more much more prominent um, than it is in uh, like compared to my Civic Si. Now this isn't really a comparison video. I'm just trying to use that as a basis, but it's it's definitely a great handling car. Now, would I take this around the canyons? Can you take this around the canyons? For sure, you can take it around the canyons, the track. You know, personally, I would say keep it stock power because this car already produces more torque than horsepower, and so the torque is already what makes it so much more aggressive in this car. Like, I, I personally, I feel more confident in my Civic Si taking around the turns than I do in this car, and that's mainly because I feel like this car is meant to go hard in a straight line you know not saying that it can't take turns it's just for me personally i feel like this is more of a straight line car to me and and it makes power it, it goes it goes quick in the straight lines and and it's personally what i feel like this car was built for it's, you know it's like the two jz's you know a lot of those you know you see back in the days making a thousand horsepower plus and they're just flying destroying everything so that's how i look at it with this supra you know um, there are people that definitely take it around the track and i'm not saying that you can't take this around the track for sure but it's not going to handle, I feel like, as par as to like a, a Type R for sure. A Type R is definitely going to be the better handling car. But this still handles pretty decent. It handles all right. Um, it's very comfortable, obviously. We've already reviewed the seats. It's very, it's very strong. We'll do a pull here once I can. Man, this intersection's like all over the place, so it's hard for me to get through. But we'll do a pull here and give you guys kind of like that feeling, that feedback of uh, how this car feels. Now the frames that I'm actually recording is at, at 60 frames per second today. Uh, usually I record it around 24. So if the background looks a little bit too smooth, it's because we're running pretty high frames right now. So, um, okay, I think after this car, we should be good guys and we'll take it, we'll take it. And it looks like people are hitting the brakes up there. I don't know why. Um, we'll do a little slight pull because I see people hitting the brakes, but and we spun tires. So it gets there really, really quick. <laughs> That's why I'm saying you gotta be careful with this car because it's almost like a Mustang low key if you don't have traction control on and you just gotta be careful because you don't wanna you know, head up into the side of the road and then there goes your bye bye Supra. Um, but yeah, you guys can see I tamed that, I controlled it. It's, it's very controllable, especially with these tires. I'm honestly telling you tires make a huge difference and this was the best combination I feel like for this car. The car handles, amazing with these tires and i can do a pull and feel confident um, i have driven and experienced rear wheel drive cars in the past before my first build was a rear wheel drive car i think the civic was actually my first front wheel drive build so if you're new to the channel yes I've, i'm familiar with this it's kind of nice being back in this but uh turns driving wise this car does a great job it grips it handles it goes directly where you want i think this is a very car to get uh, very easy car to get sideways because of the torque um handling it in a drift you know, if you're roller drive experience, I definitely would say this is definitely a car that you can just drift easily. You know, you can really get that back end out, even with these tires still, and um, just have fun with it, guys. Uh, the noise here, the noise reduction, if I if I put it in normal mode, you can barely hear. Right now we have it open for both, and we're going like 10 miles an hour. This is the worst example for me to give you guys a drive because we're in traffic. What happened, man? Oh, no. <laughs> So I'm, I'm trying to gain some distance to give you guys a little bit of a pull. I apologize. We'll get some end clips here where we'll do some pulls. But um, yes, comfortability, it's very comfortable. I like the window. It's very nice that 
you know you got a lot of windows still uh blind spots aren't too bad there are blind spot indicators on the side i don't know if you guys can see them on there but they are there and they're on each side as well so the car has great features for that uh, so you can see the rear view is actually very easy to see because of how big that backing is and then they got this little platform that came with it too so you can kind of cover the back as well which is really nice actually um, but it, it's comfortable i'm in drive right now so it's easy for me to just talk to you guys i don't have to shift i'm gonna real quick swap it over so you guys can kind of see the shifts real quick i'm just trying to gain some distance because there is some traffic i'm sorry guys it's not how i wanted to do the video but uh let's go ahead and uh just throw it in so you just throw it in manual like that now we're in manual and we're in second gear and can i downshift the first okay we'll do a quick pull and i'm gonna click it and you guys will see how fast it shifts so yeah that's pretty dang fast guys uh if you want it to be any quicker than that i honestly don't know because that's definitely not going to be something that a manual can shift as fast and i'm not gonna lie i'm a pretty fast shifter you know i'd like to say so myself you know i'm not trying to toot my own horn here but there's no way i'm gonna outshift that thing i literally clicked it before i even clicked in the clutch man and i'm telling you it's it's an amazing transmission the car still is a lot of fun so throw that back and drive I guess, unfortunately, since we're in traffic, I will conclude it and I'll put some polls at the end here for you guys so you guys can enjoy that. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and my, you know, true re review of this car and kind of giving you guys my thoughts and opinions. Um, feel free to comment below what you guys think of the car. Did this video change your mind? Do you guys feel a little bit different about the car? And um, yeah, thank you guys again for watching. Again, the new drop hit on Fong Pack. So if you guys want to support the channel, I'd highly appreciate it if you guys check out the site. I'll put it in the description below at fongpack.com. And again, keep grinding, stay humble, and yeah, that family. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care, guys. Peace.